morning. Hello. Welcome to my first dream interpretation. So feel free to ask any questions. So until you start asking questions, I'll just go ahead and you know start talking with you about what I do for dreaming and give you some tips and tricks and tools and all that delicious yumminess. Uh, so some of the things that, uh, so I guess for the first one, we'll talk about really entering that dream space to really cultivate your dreams and I'll be here we'll go for like 10 minutes see if anybody joins us and then um, if this time doesn't work and you're watching this later feel free to write comments and let me know what times do work because I'm open because I really want to be here and create this space to help you learn more about your dreams and you can tell this is my first live video because it feels really weird looking there to make eye contact with you but I will do my best so some of the stuff that I really love to do to cultivate dreams and it's really hard with our technology is to, um, hi Joe, love you, is to not watch any screens for an hour before bed, which is really hard because a lot of us do. I know I have my phone next to my bed, I'm checking emails, I'm reading on my Kindle. But a lot of times that can influence our dreams as well as damper them. So it lessens, technology can lessen the connection you have to your dreams. And for some people, uh, some highly sensitive people that um, really get a lot of information from their dreams, it can actually hinder having the phone next to the bed, having the phone even in the space. So for some dreamers, and that might be you, you might need to turn off your phone, set it in the other room, because electricity and electronics can really mess with your dream space. So trying to do that, and maybe you only do it a couple nights a week. Because I know for me too, my phone is my alarm. So really kind of play, maybe you know on a certain day of the week, you don't have to get up early. so. That's the day you turn off your phone and really have fun in this space. Really, you know, get that dream journal, keep it and, you know, make notes. On this day, I had my phone, I left it in the living room and I had these kind of dreams and really start to see the patterns because the patterns might not always emerge until you've collected some data. And I know it can be a little tedious. So, for some people, it's having that journal, even on your phone, and just, you know, marking your calendar. You know, slept with my phone, didn't sleep with my phone, read before I went to bed on an electric screen or anything like that. And feel free in, your, in the comments if you have a dream you want me to look at. Feel free to, you know, jump in write it i can go ahead and we can do that because the space really is here to help you expand your dreams and get the most from them and that dream connection and thank you joe um so if you have a dream write it if not great and i'll just keep talking about dreaming and what you can do to really enhance that space some people really like smell, and that can really accentuate your dreaming space, such as lavender, uh, mugwort. You got to be careful with mugwort. Mugwort can cause some bad dreams for really sensitive people. Crystals are another great one to help you start to cultivate your dream space and really connect with that and um, if so also sorry I have a lot running through my head um, setting your intention and giving yourself permission before you go to bed so you know really if you're working on a problem you want guidance from somebody you are trying to really figure something out you know really kind of you know I would like help with this I would like help with this and the more you repeat it, the more it goes into your subconscious and 
the more your subconscious is really going to start to work with that dream symbolism. And we've been going for about five minutes. And I'll give people a couple more minutes to join us. And then I'll go ahead and wrap this up. So, um, yeah, so the intention and permission, when I say permission, that's really giving, opening up your space. That's opening you up. A lot of times we are controlled by fear. So we kind of stop the connection before it even starts. You know, we might be like, I really want to know what I should do in my relationship, but I'm really afraid of what my subconscious is going to tell me, what my guides, my ancestors think about this situation. So we block it by not giving ourselves permission. So we let fear stop that connection. So being able to tap into that piece, you know, being able to say, okay, I give myself permission. I really do want to know. Ooh, okay, Joe. Do I have an example of one of my all-time favorite dream interpretations? Oh my goodness, so many dreams. Probably the one that really pops into mind is when I was learning to interpret dreams and in graduate school, uh, I had to take a class on dreams. And so I volunteered. I had this crazy dream where my dog was working like a dog in my dream. So talk about symbolism. He was at this desk papers piled up to the ceiling and he was writing feverishly and so many papers they were falling everywhere and then I moved into this room with a really old like 1950s tv and it was just static and uh, then I was in the desert and these men on horses started coming towards us Native Americans Hispanic people, and um, oh, I can't think of the actor's name. Morgan Freeman was there, and he was telling me that I knew what I needed to know, but I needed to be careful. And I remember these beautiful horses, these beautiful people on the horses, and there was one person that wouldn't look at me. And so the teacher talked about how that was my shadow and we didn't go there. And so as I continued my exploration into dreams, I really looked into how shadow. So our shadow is that part of us that we push away, that we deny, that we pretend it doesn't exist. And it manifests a lot in what we don't like people. We don't like people. We're really quick to judge. So that's where shadow comes in. And so in our dreams, shadow can be kind of elusive. And depending on the dream interpreter, they, you know, if you're working with a Jungian dream interpreter, they feel that shadow is always going to match your gender. However, I feel that like my shadow is gender fluid, depending on the issues I'm working on. So if I'm having issues with my masculine side, my shadow will present as masculine. If I'm working on feminine issues, it's going to be feminine. And so in this dream, it was a gentleman, it was a man. And so working with, you know, what was it about him? What was it about me that I wasn't really embracing? And this gentleman, like I said, he wouldn't make eye contact with me. He was always looking off to the side. And that's kind of what Morgan Freeman, you know, was like, Watch out, you can't trust some people. So what was it about my masculinity, my whatever I associate? So in your dreams, you're associating. So when I think of masculinity, what am I thinking of? What am I connecting to that? And in this dream, it was definitely authoritative. And not just, you know, women can be authoritative too, but for me in this moment, it was that authoritativeness, that work, 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 you know, being a slave to the job, not having a voice. And so then you realize that. And so then how do you bring that into your daily life? Because our dreams are giving us these messages. They're telling us, this is what you need to work on. This is what you need to do. And if we don't pull them into our waking lives, then 
they just kind of fall short. Sometimes you might have to do a bit more work in pulling them into the waking world and we can get into that. But for this dream, it was really looking at how can I embrace my authority? How can I own my authority? Where am I afraid of my authority? And at that point in my life, I was, you know, pretty quiet. I really didn't speak up. I really wasn't, I don't want to say bossy because that feels like the wrong word, but I really didn't take charge. I wasn't a person that was, you know, I didn't delegate. I didn't do a lot of that stuff. So being able to really say, okay, when, when can I be an authority? When can I own this? And this is okay. I can embrace this. And the other part of that dream, that working like a dog really was like a call to self-care. Where am I neglecting me? I'm doing all this work and I'm not taking care of me. So then being able to put those practices into place because we really are honoring our dreams. We're, you know, they're giving us this information and then we're bringing them into the waking world to improve our lives. So that is one of my favorite dreams. And next week I will make sure that I bring my dream journal that way as this grows, people can bring their dreams until then I can just go ahead and give you the tips and tricks as I analyze my own dreams. Just kind of funny because I didn't have any dreams last night before this, <laughs> which happens because sometimes our subconscious is, it likes to do a lot of work and it can be a trickster at times, but we can get into that and how different avenues of your personality manifest in your dreams and how you can pick out what parts of you are talking to you as well as um, the guides and ancestors and all that good stuff. And yes, I am coming back next week. It'll be 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And again, as this grows, I'm always open to being flexible with the time. So I might do some evening ones. I'm not sure yet. And as I wrap up, if you want more dreaming magic and deliciousness and funness and more to explore, go over to my website at Forward Kind Heart. I have an amazing three-day dream journey where I take you into how to cultivate your dreams, how to connect with your dreams, and then how to understand. Because a lot of times that's where we get confused is understanding. You know, I know I wake up and I think I am an insane person. This is a crazy dream. So helping you to find that and then be able to, you know, work with that. Like I said, pulling what comes in our dream world into our waking world as well as heightening the connection to your imagination because that just makes life so much richer. And there's a lot in our imagination that helps us and guides us. So you can sign up for that as well as I have classes, monthly classes that I really, they're kept really small to really work on that one-on-one. -on -one. So you get that one-on-one -on -one dream interpretation as well as the support of a group which is beautiful because it's so wonderful when you get to hear other people's ideas of what they think of your dream, which I'm hoping this will also be a little piece of that. So people can write in the comments. I think this is what this meant. This is what came up for me. So that just makes it so much richer and that really helps to collect to or connect to the world as a whole, which also influences our dreams. And I can get into that next week. So thank you, Joanne, for joining me today. I look forward to more joining us as this starts to grow. I hope everybody has a fabulous week and I will see everybody next week. Bye. Thanks for watching.